Let's quickly review what we've seen in the previous videos to ensure that you're familiar with the most important concepts. By now you should have installed BlueJ and obtained a copy of the projects that go with the Objects First with Java Textbook. You should have a general idea of what classes and objects are, but don't worry too much if it's still a little vague, because we will continue to explore both concepts. You should have created some objects within BlueJ. You should have practiced interacting with those objects by moving shapes around. And ideally, you have, will have manipulated several shapes to make a picture looking a bit like a house. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at what objects are in practice, i.e. inside the memory of a computer, because we want to take our first proper look at how to write our own classes. In other words, how to write Java source code. So what is an object? We've talked a lot about objects, bicycles, ships, triangles, squares, and so on. But what exactly is an object as a concept inside a computer? At its most basic level, an object is simply a few pieces of the computer's memory that store some data values. And we say that those values represent the object's state. In previous videos, we've mentioned the related concept of data type. We introduced the data types string and integer. In other words, text and number. So an object such as a triangle stores numbers representing its position and size and a piece of text representing its colour. You might also remember that it also stores a third type of data value, a true false value, representing whether the shape is visible or not. True false values belong to a Boolean data type. A ship stores numbers representing its course and speed and a piece of text representing its name. It turns out that we can write programs to solve many real-world problems using just a handful of basic types such as strings, numbers and Boolean values. And we're going to explore the first steps in doing that in this and the next few videos. Within BlueJ, you interact with the various objects you create by invoking or calling methods on them, such as make visible, move left, change size, and so on. What is a method? A method is simply a way of interacting with an object in order either to ask about the data values it is storing or to change the values it is storing. In other words, to ask about its current state or to change its state. For any particular object, methods limit the number of ways in which we can interact with it. For instance, we can change the size of a triangle because it has a change size method, but we cannot change the size of a ship because it doesn't have a change size method. Conversely, we can set the course a ship is to follow because it has a set course method, but it would not make sense to set the course on a triangle. How do these differences between objects such as triangles and ships come about? It's because they're created from different classes, and those classes contain the source code for both the data that its instances must store and the methods they must respond to. Let's take a quick look at some source code to give you an insight into what this means in practice. Here's the house project with the familiar set of classes that we've seen a few times already. I'm gonna create a triangle use its default name and bring up an inspector. What we see in the inspector are some integer data values, a string data value and a boolean or true false data value. So the current set of values we see represented here are the current state of this triangle object. Some of the ways in which we can interact with those data values are to call methods of the triangle. So we can see we've got things like change color, change size, make invisible, make visible, and so on. So these methods and the data values we see in the inspector 
are there because of the source code that we've written for the triangle class over here. And we can see that if we open up the source code of the triangle class. So here it is. And what we see near the beginning of the class is a set of definitions for height, width, x position, y position, color, and is visible. And each one of those corresponds to an element that we see inside the inspector of the triangle object. So it's the fact that these source code elements are here inside the class definition that causes these definitions with particular data types to appear here within the inspector. And similarly, if we look further through the source code, we can see here is something called a constructor. We'll learn more about that later on. But here we're seeing the initialization of the state of a triangle object. So these particular data values are here because the source code sets those particular values to be the initial state of a triangle object when it's created. And if we look further down within the source code, we can see some of the methods that we've already been invoking on triangle objects prior to this point. So it's the source code that we've written for the triangle class that causes these particular data features of an object to exist and that causes the particular methods of the object to pop up in this list here. So let's this time create a circle. Again, we'll accept the default name. We'll bring up the inspector for a circle. And if we put it side by side for comparison, we'll see that although it has X position, Y position, color, and is visible, which are four of the data values we saw inside the triangle, it has its own distinctive diameter. So part of a circle's definition, part of its state is its current diameter. But that will be meaningless for a triangle. Triangles don't have diameters. We can pop up the source code of circle. And just as we might expect, the elements that we see inside the source code here correspond directly to what we're seeing in the inspector over here. And again, if we look a little bit further down into what's called the constructor, the part of the source code that's responsible for initializing the state of a newly created circle, then we see 68, 230, 90, blue, 68, 230, 90, blue. So the initial state of the circle object arises directly from the source code that's defined inside the circle class. And again, here are some methods, which is exactly what we have access to if we were to pop up the menu from the circle instance. And what you might like to do is create for yourself triangles, persons, bring up the inspectors for those, and then go and take a look at the source code of those classes just to confirm that you'll see exactly the same sort of pattern. What you see inside the inspector in terms of the state of those objects is there because the source code has defined that those are the data items that a square or a person object should have. And these are the initial values that those data items should have as soon as a square or a person is created. So to summarize, in this video, we've explored the nature of objects in terms of being things that store data values, that have methods directly related to the data they store, and that those methods allow the data to be inquired about or modified, read and written, if you like. The exact set of data values that an object can store and the set of methods that it can respond to are both defined by the source code of their class definition. Each class will have source code that fits with the needs of its instances. We have observed that the data values are drawn from specific data types in particular, a text type called string, a numerical type called int, and a true-false type called boolean. 
However, an important principle of object-oriented programming is that whenever we define a class, we are actually extending the number of data types available, and we can use those new data types to define other classes. Let's see what that means by looking at the picture class. Let's create a picture object and bring up its inspector. And so here we see something rather different from what we saw with the triangle and the circle. We're not seeing numerical values or text values as part of the state of a picture. We're actually seeing an arrow symbol. And if we look over here, again, we're not seeing words like int or string as part of the data elements of a picture object. What we're actually seeing are words like square and triangle and circle. And of course, those are all class types. Those are all the classes that we've written in the rest of the project. And so what this means is that when we create a picture object, a number of squares, triangles and circles get created as part of the picture object. In other words, a picture object is a composite of instances of other classes. So in effect, by defining square, triangle and circle, we've introduced new data types into the Java language and we can define data items in other objects in terms of our own classes. That's a very powerful feature of the language. So let's look at the source code of, of picture and see how that works in practice. So here we're seeing square, triangle, circle, boolean, corresponding exactly to what we see in the inspector. And as a result, in the constructor, when a picture object is created, we need to create two new squares. We need to create a triangle. We need to create a circle because those are the elements that make up the overall picture, the picture of a house.